<laughs> hey, let's talk about the Bayou Bowl since we're on that topic. You know, as you said, Wade Phillips, Jackie Sherrill, uh, patrolling the sidelines, a great group of uh, players. And first of all, it's Texas, so it's football. And right. secondly, it's it's a great charity. It's all about the scholarships. Oh, there's no question. And we were very fortunate in that we're going to have it in Rosenberg this year. And what we did, it used to be Texas, Louisiana. The game was always played in Baytown. Tremendous athletes. I mean, NFL caliber athletes. And then colleges said, well, wait, we need these guys right at the beginning of June. So when that occurred, <clears throat> excuse me, when that occurred, we had to, uh, we couldn't take the ones that were immediately possibly players at the next level. So we took whatever else was available. They're still D1 players. Some mm -hmm. of them are D1, D2, but they're all good football players. Like you said, you have a lot. And this thing first began with Texas playing California. And Randy Rogers was the one that took everybody out there. Right. And we went out there and we lost. We were ahead. And then all of a sudden we had three flags fly. They marched him right down the field, and the guy kicked a field goal to beat us. And so Randy, he said, I've had enough. I've had fun. He said, I would like to, you know, see if any of you guys want to be the head coach. And I said, heck, yes, I want to be the head coach. <laughs> so I said, I know how the game is played now, and I understand what they do out there. So, yes, I would like an opportunity to go back. So I, he said, fine, I could do it. We, the Shriners agreed with it. My first call was to Gary Joseph, and I said, hey, pick 18 defensive players. I said, pick anyone you want. But the thing is, is that we waited at that time. The THSCA had their all-star game, too. And so we had to wait for them to select their kids before we could select ours. But again, when you're talking about the entire state of Texas, you're going to find right. some good players that oh, okay. aren't playing in the THSCA game. So we had NFL players. And so we went out there, but I took our referee and I took an umpire with us. And <laughs> we had to pay for them to come out there. And it was a blessing because we were ahead. And all of a sudden, the clock is stopping in the fourth quarter. <laughs> and, and Mike Atkinson was a referee. And uh, he came over and he said, hey, Dick, he said, Munoz is going to keep the time on the field. And so then he goes over to their sideline. And pretty soon, you know, we won. Well, then they said that, we violated rules and did all these things. And I, I said, okay, fine. But then we invited them back to Houston so they could play here and we could make it every other year. And they declined the offer. They went to Florida. They televised a game. I guess uh, I didn't see it, but I guess it blew up on them. I mean, there were fights and things of that oh, nature. Geez. So then we went to a neighboring state, Louisiana, because I believe AM and and had played Louisiana bowl game. And okay. so we went there and uh, they came and it started in 2003. And up until 2013, it was, it was Texas, Louisiana. And then in 13, the GHFCA bought the game. We said, it's our game. And so we wanted to use it. And we always have used it for scholarships, but now we own the game. And so we go out and we get cities to sponsor it. We move it all over Houston. You know, it's been in League City, it's been in Katy, it's been in Kingwood, been in Baytown, it's been in Fort Bend, it's going to be in Rosenberg this year, and uh, we had it scheduled to go on Cy Fair, but COVID destroyed that, so oh. but we try to move it around and give people an opportunity to host it, because it's a great event, and it's, uh, you know, because of Rob, you know, now it's going to have even more notoriety, when you bring in Jackie and you bring in oh, yeah. Nate Phillips. I mean, and then you get those other legends to come out and lend their names to the game. You know, it's a great, it's a great cause, you know, scholarships for young kids. And these are scholarships so that we clarify. These are scholarships given to kids usually that don't get an academic or an athletic scholarship. Oh, okay. And so they apply. They have to be good students. And, uh, you know, they've got to go to school. And uh, the thing is, is that, you know, all these kids that are getting scholarships and they get partials, you know, we'll, we'll consider that. Right. But again, it's a male, female thing and uh, anybody can apply. And then there's a board that goes through these applicants. And prior to the Bayou Bowl, we would give two $500 scholarships. Now we give as many scholarships as kids apply. So it's been great. And they range anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500. And sometimes wow. 
just depends on how much money we make off of the Bayou Bowl game. And that means so much. I mean, I've been involved with the charities that give scholarships and, and you know, a lot to kids that, um, you know, they don't get full rides. These are kids that have to pay for their books, have to pay for their um, uh, dorm room or housing. You know, they have to pay partial or if not full tuition. Man, that fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars is the world to them. Heck, yeah. My son was fortunate. Lake, that's Drew's older brother. He went to Southwest Texas at that time. Now it's Texas State. Right. But he got he got that scholarship and that helped us because he wasn't he wanted to play at that level, but he wasn't going to get a scholarship. He was going to have to earn one. So that helped a great deal. And uh, we were excited about that. But, you know, it's just a great event. It's for a great cause. And there's some people that we got to mention since we're talking about this. Yes. Paso, the officials, you know, they volunteer. They come out and there's two cha- or there's two groups at work. So we have 14 officials that are working this week that volunteer their time. And this is one of the few times that you're nice to them. You don't yell at them or anything because they're volunteering. So and the <laughs> other thing is that there's a guy named Norman Richardson who since 2003 has cooked burgers, hot dogs and things. And it's in the end zone. And then the officials that aren't working the game and the other coaches, there's camaraderie. You can stand around and talk and watch eat and watch these kids play. And it's a great thing. But Norman and then a guy named Mike Atkinson, they were two of the instrumental people in providing officials and getting us that food. So there's several people that have made it available and made it great. And, you know, the city of Baytown embraced it for 13 years. And then we've gone back there. But it's it's ironic, too. And the kids, I saw your ring. And that's a nice ring. And our kids all get a nice ring as well. And uh, the reason that they do is because there's a guy named Connie McQuirk, who at that time was a CEO of Citizens Bank in, in uh, Baytown, which became Amogee. Mm-hmm. And he was an All-American, I believe, in the 48 or 50 at a and And he said, I still have my award that I got from the Texas High School Coaches Association. So wow. he said, I want something for these kids that they can keep forever as a memory. And so we talked to Balfour and they were so gracious. And so they provided the rings wow. at a very discount cost. And uh, uh, this year they're, they're providing the rings for the players. Harold Levitt, he's a, he's a great guy. And he's the one that's making that happen. But the kids get a nice ring and it goes back to the beginning when Mr. McGuirt, you know, and the president of a bank or CEO, when he says, let's make it happen, you're going to make it happen. And the committee that we had that ran it was we had the mayor of Baytown. We had the economic developer of Baytown, which was Mike Shields. Mm-hmm. And what it, really the way it started is Connie McGuirk told Mike Shields, he said, let's bring a game to Baytown. They contacted me. Then at that time, the mayor was Pete Alfaro, a big Texas guy. And so they said, let's make it happen in Baytown. 